chasing the police every single day. Hero cop bullied, intimidated, forced to move for trying to save suicidal man, instead of killing him. A hero cop chose to save a life instead of end it and for this, he was fired, bullied, harassed, and forced to move out of town. By Matt Agarist, January 4, 2019. Weirton, West Virginia as TFTP reported last year, Former Weirton police officer Stephen Mater sued the city after he was fired for not killing a suicidal man who needed help. Mater received $175,000 in a settlement as a result of his unnecessary firing. But the successful settlement was the beginning of a dark road for this hero cop who was unafraid to show restraint. My hope is that no other person on either end of a police call has to go through this again, said Mater at the time. Sadly, However, this former Marine has since been forced to move because the intimidation and bullying has gotten so bad. West Virginia attorney and ACLU representative Timothy P. O'Brien helped to bring the lawsuit against the city. No police officer should ever lose their job, for choosing to talk to, rather than shoot, a fellow citizen, said O'Brien. His decision to attempt to de-escalate the situation should have been praised, not punished. Simply put, no police officer should ever feel forced to take a life unnecessarily to save his career. But this was not the case. Mater was fired, intimidated, and forced out of town by a department who thinks it's more important to kill people than to try to save them. As we reported at the time, on May 6, 2016, Mater responded to a domestic call about a suicidal person. When he arrived on the scene, Mater confronted 23-year-old Ronald D. Williams who was armed and mentally distraught. Williams' family called police and noted on the 911 call that he was attempting suicide by cop but that the gun had no bullets and didn't even contain the magazine. Matter said when he arrived, he began talking to the young man in his calm voice. I told him, put down the gun, and he's like, just shoot me. And I told him, I'm not going to shoot you brother. Then he starts flicking his wrist to get me to react to it. I thought I was going to be able to talk to him and de escalate it. I knew it was a suicide by cop situation, Mater said, adding that, he wasn't screaming, yelling, he wasn't angry. He just seemed distraught. Whenever he told me to shoot him it was as if he was pleading with me. At first, I'm thinking, do I really need to shoot this guy? But after hearing Just Shoot Me and his demeanor, it was, I definitely can't. Mater showed incredible restraint in the situation, even though Williams was attempting to provoke a suicide by cop. It is a red flag, Mater told ProPublica in a recent interview. I was just trying to calm him down. It was really just talking to him like he was a human being talked to him like a guy who was in a wrong state of mind, like a guy who needed to be calmed down. Who needed help. I didn't want to shoot him. I don't want to say this, because it's really corny, but I was kind of sacrificing my well-being for him. I'm not going to shoot this kid for my well-being. I'm going to wait to see more from him. Sadly, as Mater began to reason with Williams and de escalate the situation, backup arrived, and another officer, Ryan Kuzma immediately shot and killed Williams without a second of consideration. To add insult to injury, Mater was fired for his restraint, and Kuzma, who murdered Williams, was cleared of all wrongdoing, showing that the police department is explicitly encouraging indiscriminate killings. I loved being a police officer. And for them to say because of this incident you're not going to continue here was heartbreaking. It had me questioning myself, should I be an officer, Mater told NBC. Mater would eventually be forced to find work as a truck driver and leave his police career behind but nor before enduring a slew of abuse at the hands of the killer cop. Mater claims Kuzma repeatedly texted him calling him a coward and blamed him for threats being made against the department. There's the thin blue line, 
and one of the ironies of this case is that as we've seen across the county how many instances police have used deadly force in circumstances where that force is questioned, but nothing is ever done. In most cases, you don't see training or suspension. When you contrast with what Officer Mater did and how he's been treated, and officers who've used deadly force and how they've been treated, it speaks volumes to why we have a problem with deadly force in this country, O'Brien said. Illustrating his stand-up character, Mater has no regrets and still believes he did the right thing. I wouldn't change anything. Even after them saying that I failed to eliminate a threat and that it should have been handled differently, I still believe I did the right thing. And a lot of people think I did the right thing, too. I know it's not just me, he said. And he's right, TFTP knows Mater did the right thing, which is why we've been reporting on it for over two years. There is one silver lining, however, to the end of this tragic story and that is the fact that William's family has been outspoken about their appreciation for Mater's attempt to de-escalate. My brother wasn't alone, that there was someone there that was looking at him as a person. I found him Stephen on Facebook, and I ended up messaging him on Messenger, just to thank him for what he did for my brother, and for being there for him, William's sister, Amanda told ProPublica. He said that he just wished that he could have had a few more seconds, that he wished it would have turned out different, that my brother would still be alive. Shooting and killing suicidal or mentally distraught people sadly seems to be the standard operating procedure for police across the country. We have covered countless cases over the years where officers have indiscriminately killed suicidal people instead of helping them out. Obviously, if a family member makes a phone call to police because a loved one is suicidal, the last thing they want is for someone to get hurt, but when police arrive the situation tends to escalate quickly and result in violence. Hi everyone, my name is Joseph Cohen, I'm the Executive Director of the American Civil Liberties Union of West Virginia. I have an important update on a major case that I know a lot of you have been following. Last May, you may recall, we filed a lawsuit on behalf of Stephen Mater. He's the former police officer who had been fired by the Weirton Police Department for not shooting a young black man that he determined was attempting to commit suicide by cop. Let me repeat that for those of you who aren't necessarily familiar with the case. He was fired for not shooting someone. We felt like we had to be involved in this case for a couple of reasons. First, we hear about so many outrageous acts of violence perpetrated by the police against communities of color for which there is no accountability. So often we hear about officers who are not prosecuted and are in fact back on the streets within a few weeks. But in Weirton, West Virginia, we have a police officer who was fired for doing everything we want police officers to do. He attempted to de-escalate a very tense situation. He did not shoot somebody that he uh, reasonably determined was not a threat to others. By terminating Stephen Mater, the message was clear. Officers in the Weirton Police Department were expected to err on the side of killing people, and that is not acceptable. The second reason we wanted to get involved in the case is that there was an important constitutional uh, concern involved. Under the Fourth Amendment to the United States Constitution, a police officer may only use deadly force if he or she has probable cause to believe that the target of that force is a threat of imminent bodily harm to the officer or someone else. Officer Mater came to the opposite conclusion. He reasonably and objectively correctly determined that R.J. Williams was not a threat to anyone except perhaps to himself. And once Officer Mater made that determination, he was not permitted to use deadly force under the United States Constitution. In essence, the Weirton Police Department fired Stephen Mater for failing to violate R.J. Williams' Fourth Amendment right not to get shot. And we simply refused to believe that a police officer could be lawfully terminated for uh, not violating someone's constitutional rights. Today, we're uh, happy to announce that Officer Mater and the City of Weirton have come to a settlement agreement. As part of the agreement, the City of Weirton has paid a rather large cash sum to Officer Mater. And while we're happy to receive, uh, to obtain some relief for Mr. Mater, we recognize how much work we have to do. The termination of Stephen Mater is yet one more uh, window that opens, exposing 
a toxic culture that infects far too many police departments in America. We need to end the insularity and hostility towards community exhibited by so many law enforcement agencies. We need to give law enforcement officers tools to effectively serve their communities. And that means we need to invest in de-escalation training, implicit bias training, and crisis intervention training. We hope that the resolution of this lawsuit will send a message to the city of Weirton and police departments across our country that our communities deserve thoughtful, compassionate, transparent law enforcement. But we know that we have a lot of work to do here in West Virginia, and we're gonna continue our work to resolve problems in policing that, as we see them. If you're interested in supporting our work, there's a link in the comments. Um, throughout the day, you can, and in the coming days, we'll be sharing uh, relevant news coverage of the case on our social media platforms. Thank you for uh, listening and thank you for caring about this important issue. Hey, Sheriff County, this is Sheriff County Cop Watch. I am using any video here with under fair use. If you uh, have criticism, reporting, teaching, etc., and please donate. I do not make money from YouTube. And uh, there are different ways to donate in the uh, video links. Thanks.